what you take you from me. We are now resuming the proceedings. And assistant returning officers will show that the ballot boxes are empty and close them while we're watching. Please make sure that nothing is hidden to anybody. We, we are all satisfied, is it not? We have seen very well. The procedure to be followed is as follows. Members will be called in, in alphabetical order according to their surnames. When their names are called out, may they please collect a ballot paper from the voting table. And after collecting the ballot paper, each member is required to proceed to one of the ballot booths and make a clear cross in the box alongside the name of the nominated candidate or member of his or her choice. After making the mark on the ballot paper and while still in the booth, members should please fold their ballot papers in a way that the official mark can be seen by the returning officer and the ballot box. After the returning officer has noted the mark on the ballot paper, members should please deposit their papers in the ballot box and resume their seats. The returning officer will now call upon members as announced to come and vote. Abram. Phoebe Nokolo, Abrams, Alexander Lillian Amelia, Adams, Rachel Cecilia, Adunes, Nombuise Lutleris, April Heinrich Jovina, Aries Leticia Heloys, August Sean Nigel, Bagram Michael, Babela Kupeng Orbit, Bason Leonard Jones. Bachman Darren, Besani Sibongile Jeremia, Bilangulu John Tlengani, Bilangulu Kensani Kate, Brit Tamarin, Breitenbach Glennis, Brink Silier, Bongo Bongani Thomas, Boroto Matlara Grace, Boshoff. Weynard Johannes.
Potes Alvin Pozoli Pelinda Butelezi Elfas Mfagazeleni Butelezi Mangosutu Kaja Kachalia Khalib Kain Yusuf Kapa Ndumiso Kapa Rosemary Nogozola Kado Michael John Kebe Kulu Russell Ntigayezwe Kele Pegogwake Hamilton Reza Kanya Chibani Moses Steve, Chibangu Makosini Mishak, Cheti Murgan, Chikunga Lydia Sindiswa, Chowa Naledi Nukanya, Clark Michelle Odette, Creasy Barbara Dallas, Cuthbert Matthew John, Kwele Siabonga Cyprian, De Freitas Manuel Simo Franca. MPs are currently voting by secret ballot to uh, basically vote for the National Assembly Speaker. Two people have been nominated, the ANC's Tandi Mudise and the DA's Tembegile Richard Majola. Tembegile uh, Majola have uh, been nominated and of course now the members of parliament are voting on that. Uh, just to give you a sense of perspective in terms of uh, how many seats uh, these uh, parliamentarians have, the ANC has 230 seats, um, the DA has 84, uh, the EFF Vilnius, has 44 uh, seats. They're calling the next round of MPs to come and vote. And basically, um, one wonders, you know, what kind of uh, outcome will happen, given that uh, the ANC does have 230 seats Patricia. in Parliament. It's going to be an interesting outcome. Dikale so they're going to be calling out uh, these uh, MPs' names. They're going to be voting in rounds. Uh, it's going to be quite a process. Dikale it's nearly 400 Dikale people Rosemary. that need to vote. Derek Mervyn Alexander. Jean Mosibonisseni Maxwell. Lamini Batabile Olive. Lamini Dora Dunana. Lamini Masha Zingis. Well, it's certainly been an interesting day today. Uh, we did learn earlier that uh, the ANC's Deputy President, David Mabuza, uh, had decided to postpone being sworn into Parliament as an MP. Um, and that's because he has decided to deal with the ANC's Integrity Committee's um, allegations against him that he has been um, involved in misdeeds. So he wants to deal with that. Um, Julius Malema was speaking to the SABC earlier and just saying that uh, the, the uh, DP's move 
move is really a selfish one. He just wants to hear whether he's been appointed as deputy president by Cyril Ramaphosa, President Cyril Ramaphosa. And if indeed that's the case, then he'll go ahead and put his name in to be sworn in. But of course, we just have to wait and see. And of course, Nomvula Mokanyana as well, coming out to say that she's withdrawing. She doesn't want to uh, go in and be an MP because of citing family responsibilities. She's still currently in mourning as well. The ANC has indicated that she's likely to be deployed at Lutuli House. Faku Zukisa Sherol. So in this process, uh, the Chief Justice Mokhoi Mokhoi has uh, tried to ensure that uh, it's a very transparent process. He made sure that all the parliamentarians uh, looked to see that the ballot boxes were indeed empty before this process that you're seeing in front of you uh, took place. And of course, uh, uh, no doubt they will seal those boxes in front of everybody and take them to a safe place for uh, accounting. Um, so yeah, a, pr a transparent process that's taking place. After this process, once the uh, National Assembly Speaker has been elected. Uh, the process will then move on to the President of the Republic being elect um, elected. Um, of course, uh, someone from the floor can then put forward a name to oppose him. Of course, it's highly unlikely, but that is the process uh, that we have in this democratic South Africa. Gordon Pravin Jamnadas, Graham Samantha Jane, Grunewald Ignatius Michael, Grunewald Petras Johannes, Kumbi Hlanganani Sipelele, Kumbu Tsilidzi Thomas, Kumede Sibusi So Nigel, Kungubele Mondli, Kwarube Siviwe, Hadebe Beki Matthews. We're just I counting know, and uh, realizing that uh, they're calling out about 10 MPs at a time. Uh, they're close to 400 MPs who are going to have to vote. So you do the maths as to how long this process is going to take. But of course, it's a very important one. Sonyana Konzi and Towers of Fortunate. Olomisa Bandubonga Harrington. Olomisa Sango Patekile. Hussein Mohammed Hanif. Horn Werner. Hassinger Christian Hans Henrich. Ishmael Hassan Hassan Nabanu, Jacob Faiz, Jacobs Kenneth Leonard, James Kyoko Hubert, Jeffrey John Harold. Jumat Peterson, Tina Monica, Jordan Eloise, Joseph Dennis, Julius Jack 
Warren William, Kate Puti Peter, Kekana Pinky Sharon, Kalipa Tandutolo David, Kanyile Tembisile Angel, Kaula Makotis Bongile, Kibi Miriam Tenjiwe. King Chantal Valencia, Kivit Noxolo, Kodwa Kadiso Goodenough, Kola Diane, Khomani Rosina Tetsana, Kurenov Gerardus Willem, Kopani Semagaleng Patricia, Krier Hendrik Christian Krefford, Krumbok Gregory Rudy, Kubai and Gbani Mameloka Trafosa. Kubeka Nomsa Josephina, Kulas Busiso McDonald, Guangguang Mabayomzi Lawrence Saziso, Lamola Ronald Ozi, Langa Togozani Makosonke, Lies Robert Alfred, Lekwasa Tidimalo Innocentia, Lekota Musiwa Gerhard Patrick, Lesuma Regina Mina Buteng, Letati Duba Dipua Betha. Letzie Walter Tibucho, Lorima James Robert Bon, Lotrit Anneli, Lubengo Marubini Loren, Tuli Begizizwe Nivand, Luzi Posashulene, Make Jerome Joseph, Mabe Bertha Peace, Mabena Tamsanga Begokwake. So this process could take a while in the sense that right now the Mabisa members of parliament Mabisa. are voting for the national speaker. Mabisa. Thereafter, once the national speaker has been elected, the new speaker will preside over the nomination of the deputy speaker. If more than one person is nominated, what's going to happen is this very same process. That is, the members of parliament will have to now vote in secret ballot again for the deputy speaker. But for, for now, the only name that we've heard is that of the ANC's um, uh, previous deputy speaker uh, who is uh, supposed to be, um, well, th he's the only name that's been put forward. Uh, but if the DA, for example, were to come out with a second name, then there would be another voting process. So it could be a long day. Maka Kaili to Elvis, Maka Nisha Gratitude, Mahambesa la Tandi, Masalela Amos Fish, Masazi Kathleen Dibulelo, Masaulu Mikatego Golden, Maso Ntahume Patricia, Maso Bumbangiseni David, Mahuma Pelo, Supra Uba King Ramiletti, My Man Musi and Losias. Maine Mukoni Colin, 
Majotina Pemi Castellina Pamela, Majola Figile Zakaria, Majola Tembekile Richard, Majosi Zandile, Makubela Machele Lucizo Sharon, Makwetla Samson Patache, Malaji Kluluhelo, Malazi Moba Solomon, Malema Julius Sillo, Malinga Valencia Togozil. Shall I go? Malumane, Vuisile Promise, Maluleke, Boitomelo, Mama Bolo, Jacob Boy, Manamele, Huaridi Buti, Mananiso, Jane Seboletwe, Mandela, Zwele Velile, Mandle Siswe, Dalibunga, Maneli, Boyce, Makosonke, Manganie, Jane, Manku, Lisa and Kosinati, Mantash, Priscilla Tozama. Mandacha Samson Kwede. Mapisa ma Ngakula, no severe and old tando. Mapulani ma Mushopi Philemon. Mariah Eric Johannes. Mares Eric Johannes. Mares Sarah Jacobus Francois. Maruo, Maruo Tandisiwel Machau Tandisiwa Linen. Masango Bridget Staff, Maseko Jele, Numatemba Henrietta, Mashabela Mwanama Kweta, Rineilwe, Mashiko Mfana Robert. Mashiko Lamini Kwati Kandith, Mashele Timothy Victor, Masipa Noko Phineas, Masondo David, Masondo Tabile Sylvia, Masaule Godfrey Pumulo, Maswangani Mkakani Joseph, Matafa Oscar Masarona, Matale Castle Charlie, Matebula Elphas Fani. Matthias and Taco Sam, Matoni Natasha Wendy Anita, Baba Matandega Muluku, Mbata Simpiwe Tuele Nomfula, Balula Figile April, Mboweni Tito Titus, Mbele Zakele Njabulo, Mbingo Kika Babongi We Priscilla, Mbuyane Simanga Hepi.
McDonald Lawrence Edward, McGlua Joseph Job, Mkunu Edward Senzo, Mkunu Tembika Vuyusili Vuyusili, Mdaba Sibusisu Welcome, Mente Ntumbo Vuyu Veronica, Meshwe Kenneth Rasalabi Joseph, May Peter, Mfaketu Noma India Kathleen, Ngweba Teliswa. Haule Mahabo Regina, Mjong or Tsepo Winston, Milehem Kevin John, Mkalipi Sengiwe Octavia, Mkachwa Nompendu Lotobile, Mkise Sengiwe Bushe, Mkise Zuelini Lawrence, Mkwanazi Jabulile Cynthia Nightingale, Mlenzana Zola, Mutle Tabo Wills Nelson. Mwate Raisibe Martha Modise Mole Boheng Modise Philip Matsapole Pochiso Modise Tandi Ruth Moela Desmond Lawrence Mofoking Jacqueline Motla Homang Muhammad Hisamuddin, Moshlala Mathibe Rebecca, Mokause Mabatho Olive, Mokoto Sali Mochehuane. Mukwena Lesokonolo Goodwill, Mukwele Tebuko Josephine. Looks like Tandi Mudise has uh, just been asked to go up and vote as well. She is uh, the, uh, the ANC's nominee for uh, National Assembly Speaker. And uh, the Deputy Speaker nominee from the ANC is Lesicha Zonodi. Uh, there is no other name as yet, but as I did mention a little while ago, uh, once uh, the National Assembly Speaker has been elected, um, that person will then preside over a process uh, to seek out the new Deputy Speaker of Parliament. And if more than one name is nominated, this process that you're seeing right now will unfold again as MPs will have to then vote for a Deputy uh, Speaker. But in the event that it's only Lisicha Zenodi's name, then it's likely that uh, he would just then be elected uh, accordingly. Mpumza Gordon Tinikaya Msane Tembi Porsche Msibi Veronica Zanele Msimang Christian Temba, Ntembu Alice Lebani, Ntembu Jackson Mpiwa, Ntenjane Tumisani Fani, Ntetwa Emmanuel Nkosinati, Mulawuzi Tilibali Elfas, Mulda Cornelius Petrus, Mulda Frederick Jacobus.
Munyai Tsilizi Bethwell, Mutambi as we hang with faith, sorry, Mvana Nongosi Quini, Mieni Ernest Togozani, Ndaba Claudia Nontasha, Ndabeni Abrahams Stella Tembisa, Ndrozi Mbuiseni Quintin, Ngobo Sibongiseni, Ngobo Sipose Tu Lindingos, Ngwenya Delisile Blessing, Ngwezi Olani, Ngabani Nobushe Pamela, Ngwani Mashabani Maite Emily, Ngosi Begi Zwe Simon, Ngosi Duma Moses, Notata Batkolile Babongile, Noluchungu Nontando Judith, Nontele Ngetisi, Nola, Kola. And Languini, El Natasha, Ntobongwana, Nolitha, Ntombela, Madala, Louis David, Nchaveni, Kumbuzo, Poppy Silence, Nchaisha, Lulama Maxwell, Ntuli, Makoni Maria, Nyonso, Mzwanele, Nzimandi, Bonginkozi, Emmanuel, Nzuza, Njabulo, Beka, Nkese, Tembelani, Waltermate, Thulas. Numa lom choko zisi nkululeko. Olifan Mildred Nelisiwe. Opperman Kizela. Pambo Vuyani. Pando Grace Naledi Mandisa. Babo Anthony Hope Mangwana. Patrian Sipogushe. Paulson Mohamed, Mohamed Nazia. Peacock Ndaulim Patricia. Peter Zamukolo Joseph. Peters Elizabeth Dipuo, Pasha Matume Joseph, Phillips Cheryl, Piri Carol Mohadi, Pilane Majake Mahatazo Charlotte Chana, Powell Emma Louise, Kaiso Polisile Shinas, Khadebe Begizizwe Abraham, Khadebe Jeffrey Tamsanga. Ramadwa Matonzi Miriam. Ramaphosa Madamela Cyril, Rose Adrian Christopher, Sarupen Ashaw Nick, Shreiba Leon Amos, Siabi Albert 
Mamoka, Self James, Situlu Isaac Silu, Simenya Machueni Rosina, Shabalala Lizi Figelepi, Shabalala Num Vuzo Francisca. Shabangu Susan, Sharif Nazli Khan, Shalembe Mal Malit Yake Lyman, Shembene Henry Andres, Andri Shibambu Nico Floyd, CBC Christopher Howard Mzwake, Sibia Tutuzile Patricia, Sitwai, Nomate Woka, Nomate Woka, Nancy, Sindani Patrick Singh Naren. Sisulu Lindi Wenongaeba. Sitole Ketamabala Petros. Siwela Elvis Holwana. Siwela Violet Sizani, Siwea Hulani Rulani Tembi, Siwesa Anatleta Matapelo, Skosana Kijim, Kijimani Jim, Squacha Mtrebisi, Sokacha Mkolisa Simon, Somyo Sakumzi Stoffels. Sonti Nokulunga Primrose, Sotiu Makoto Magdalene, Spies Eleanor Rochelle Jacqueline, Stianazen John Henry, Stein Annette, Stockhang, Stock Dikhang Matthews, Sukas Marie Elizabeth, Swart Stephen Nicholas, Swart Bernice, Tarabella Machesi, Nomsa Innocentia. Her planche Oket Stephanos, Tembegwa Sophie Susan, Thring Wayne Maxim, Tito Lorato Florence, Tomelang Kitumezi Bridget, To Muluku Megi, Tolashe Noguzola Teris, Tseke Grace Kekulu, Tseki Mohata Alfred, Sinodi Solomon Lichisa. Shabalala Judith, Chuaku Nkini, Chuete Busisiwe, Chuete Pamela, Fandam Pumzi Le Thelma, Van der Merve Lizel Linda, Van der Waal Desiree, Van Dijk Veronica, Van Minen Benedicta Maria, Van Staden Philippus Adrian, Walters Thomas Charles Ravenscroft, Walters Michael, Weber Anneri Maria Magdalena, Vessels Vota 
Bainand, Whitfield Andrew Grant, Winkler Hannah Shamima, Wilson Evelyn Rain, Taba Fusumuzi Cyril, Taba Nchaba Pindisile Priti, Tasa Fikile Tivelias. So I'm joined in studio by our senior political reporter, Mzwandile Mbeche, uh, just to assist me in uh, just uh, taking a look and unpacking what's going on right here in front of your screen, uh, what it all means, and we'll, you know, chat about some historical perspectives as well. Mzwandile, this is quite a long process right now. Uh, the MPs are uh, doing a secret ballot uh, for the national speaker. And as I was I tried to do a bit of research and hmm. I found that once the national speaker has been elected, then what's going to happen thereafter is that she will preside yeah. over the deputy speaker being yeah. uh, elected, assuming that there's more than one person yeah. nominated. Just yeah. take us through that. Oh, yes, of course. And um, I think many of us were hoping that it will be a very quick process um, because, you know, in our system, uh, we vote for a party. Uh, and then the, those MPs then go and elect the speaker and elect the president. So what basically uh, is happening is that um, uh, the, we had the process where the opposition decided that, well, uh, the ANC could have obtained the majority, but they are not going to have their way. And also, I think it's very clever as well on the part of the opposition as well, particularly the DA. This is a secret ballot. So out of those 230, will all of them vote for you? Mm. And I think they want, they want to also capitalize on the issue that there is this reported factionalism or there is this factionalism within the ANC. Are they all happy with the choices that they've been made? Yeah. And I think it's very, very strategic for them to say, well, let's test if we put uh, our own candidate. So how will the result come out? Because, I mean, you and I know, based on the history of the past, that uh, the, the the will be elected the speaker. Yeah, but and just the course, basic numbers as well. Yes, yes, yes. But let's see, will all those numbers uh, vote for her or there are those who perhaps will not be happy and vote for, um, and vote for let's say, the opposition? Mm. Perhaps that could even trigger them fielding a candidate for president. <laughs> That would be very interesting. Yeah. So with the deputy speaker, mm. do you think that they, I mean, this is a very mm. lab laborious, pardon me, process. Mm. Do you really think they're going to play the same type of trick and uh, nominate and, not, and, oh, we're going to now listen to the Chief Justice. Have you, is it done? Have you finished? Are they all closed and sealed? Thank you. I now suspend the proceedings so that the votes can be counted. And once that has been done, the bells will be rung for five minutes for the resumption. May we, may we rise. 
And so the, Dep the Chief Justice uh, Mokhweng Mokhweng has adjourned proceedings now that all the votes have been, uh, have been uh, now cast. Uh, they're now going to be uh, gone off and uh, counted. And as he said, once uh, the count has been done, uh, bells will ring in Parliament uh, and uh, for the MPs to come back and hear what the outcome is. Uh, we're going to continue talking with my colleague Mzwandil Mbeche. He's our senior political reporter who has uh, a very good idea of what's going on. So. The next phase is obviously the announcement of who's won. Like you've yes. just mentioned, yes. we'll see what the numbers tell us. You yes. know, yes. Have yes. all the, M the ANC MPs at least mm. voted for yeah. Tandi Mudise. But thereafter is the deputy uh, speaker yeah. nomination. Do we expect that it's only going to be Lechisa Zenodi's name put forward? Hey, you, you know, it's very difficult to say that uh, because um, you don't know what the game plan for the DA is, um, which really does seem to um, want to show that uh, despite its um, electoral decline, they are still a force to be reckoned with. Mm. And uh, I'm sure I'm um, going to the elections, uh, hoping perhaps to increase your share, and then somehow you get a bit of a knock. You would want to find ways really to bounce back. Mm. And I think that's the reason perhaps why they trying to show we're still there. Obviously, they still have a huge number. I mean, they only lost, I think, five, five people. Seats, yeah. um, they still have 84 people. So, well, the ANC might have won con overwhelmingly, but they, quite, they lost quite a, a number of people. It's about 19. 19 seats. Yes. Yes. But remember, in established democracies, um, all you need to, to form government is 50 plus. Mm -hmm. So in this instance, they are at 57. But because I think we are used to them winning beyond 60 that's why it will it will be a, a, a big deal really. yeah but they still have an overwhelming majority so most of the things they are able to to do without any problem yeah so i don't know whether with the deputy speaker the da would feel uh, perhaps let's also test that's why i'm saying once we see these numbers coming out perhaps we'll inform them so what is it that they'll do they yes. may even i was even saying they may even perhaps change their minds and test for president i know that earlier they had said no because there was an election and then people of south africa made their choice they probably won't bo won't bother but can you imagine just just for argument's sake let's say the speaker Perhaps she wins by let's say two hundred and five, yeah. and then and then the the rest of the opposition. I know it's in a very hypothetical situation. Mm. I'm sure there will be that edge to say, ah, oh, well, let's give it a shot. Who knows? Because it's a secret ballot, and uh, so <laughs> if it goes our happen. way, anything anything can happen. Yes. So you expect that the process with the. Um, election of President Ramaphosa is going to run smoothly and just take us through it right now he's an MP yes. but once he becomes president of the yes. Republic again he can't be an MP just take yes. us through that process so what happens is that um, obviously for him to be eligible to be uh, elected uh, president so he must be a member of parliament because uh, they must choose from amongst themselves mm. uh, who will be president so that is why um, this morning they are all sworn in as the members of parliament and his name will be forwarded by, by the ANC and we know that and obviously if there is no opposition or if there is no nomination from other parties and remember there is a very energized EFF there as well so they haven't said anything they normally uh, spring surprises mm. what if they, they hold they their cards close you, to you, their chest. you know yeah. so but what happens is that whoever then gets um, uh, elected by parliament to be the president so he will be president elect if he, if he gets elected so he ceases to be a member of parliament, therefore creating another vacancy for the ANC. Already there's several vacancies mm. uh, because those people we thought were going to be in parliament. Um, so, I mean, the deputy president, Didi, is, is not there. Um, Mamun mm. And once the president is elected, and then he immediately ceases to be a member of parliament. And then there'll be another. Zwandile, no doubt other colleagues are going to be having a chat with you throughout the day on this subject. Well, uh, that's where we're going to leave it. Of course, we are following proceedings in Parliament from the On Point team. We say goodbye, uh, and uh, we're going to uh, we're going to you're going to see uh, SA today at the top of the hour. But for now, that's all from us. Thank you.
think uh, they've just uh, agent briefly now. They're going to go through the counting, so we need to fill that space. <laughs> Uh, I think Debo has spoke to them. Yeah. I think we will not Which is? Group photo. For whom? For the MPs. The chance of whom? Group photo for all the MPs. Oh, the new MPs. No, oh, including the president. Yeah. So the, the Machado is going to stand? Yeah. Machu, okay. I think the ones sitting down are the ones that are going to be clinging to him. I'm not going to there. So it's possible most that minister can, you know, reinstate it be portions of same departments. All right, okay. Is that is that is that common? Like what percentage of ministers normally? It's very common. Okay. Very common. Especially those who process but they're cool.
Parliament and uh, right now the whole story of who's going to be speaker is playing out and a little bit later on we are assuming that uh, one Cyril Ramaphosa will be the next president of South Africa. We're well, helping me to unpack this process and uh, what will be going on this afternoon. I'm now joined by political analyst commentator Angelo Fick. Thanks so much for joining us. Good afternoon. All right last time we chatted the elections had just happened and we were doing this post-mortem and I suppose now the the dust has settled somewhat, or has it? That no, quite. <laughs> uh, no one's quite pronounced on the corpse. So yeah. the post postmortem is not quite finished. Mm. Um, uh, some last minute withdrawals from eligibility for parliament by some senior official, um, and also, you know, this limbo that yeah. the deputy president of the African National Congress has now been placed in and uh, some fancy footwork uh, covering the mm. spin suggesting that this will not affect the composition of the cabinet. What do you think is going on? You know, I think they're telling us uh, Nomvula Mukanyani is grieving, although earlier this week she was going to be the chair of chairs. They would have discussed that with her. She would have accepted the position. And then at the 11th hour, she pulls out. Last night, again, 11th hour, we're here, Malusi Gigava and uh, Deputy President Mabuza. What do you think is going on? So I think partly it's the change in the political economy of South Africa in that uh, state institutions have suddenly been re-empowered, uh, that there will be no protectors, we are told, we're waiting to see whether this will happen, but there are no protectors who will prevent prosecution from happening. Once the oath of office is taken as members of parliament, of course, that oath uh, has certain consequences and violating that oath or once you're a member of parliament, should you answer a question from an opposition party member and mislead the parliament in a particular way, lying to parliament is an offence that has seen someone go to prison for. So there are all sorts of new dynamics in play that have to, I think, be watched by people who may not want to mm. wear the so-called orange overalls um, and may want to have a different approach. Also, there are dynamics inside the party that have to be taken account of, and this could be uh, around those dynamics between the factions. And now that the election is over, mm. all those calls for unity may have to take a second seat to people's ambitions. Mm. Those dynamics, we will, only see them so, we will only see them work themselves out over the next year, two years, as we go into the next set of elections for who does stand up for the ANC and where fingers are being pointed at whom for what purposes. Mm. So this report by the Integrity Committee is not new, it's been out a while. So those people that were implicated knew a while ago. Again, 11th hour, they only step forward and say, I'm not going to go to Parliament. Some are saying they've done the right thing. But one can't help getting a sense that maybe they were elbowed. They could have been elbowed, but they could also be have been reminded by the kinds of statements that have been made by the Chief Justice over the last few days around particularly the duty that falls to elected officials and to officials who are constitutional beings once they have been elected. And this may be, for some people, a sign of hope that the new dawn is not just mm -hmm. another day, the same clock, but that actually there may be new dynamics at play here. The test, of course, will be for Cyril Ramaphosa, both as head of state but separately as head of a party, whether he can unify the various forces and whether the ANC can come out of this stronger rather than weaker. Because if it comes out weaker, of course, the next two elections coming up, those will be issues yeah. that the party would have to face. If it comes out stronger, the opposition certainly has to wake up and realize that the party under Cyril Ramaphosa may have been injured in this election, but could you know, come back stronger. But that again, you know, those are dynamics that will play themselves out over the next two years. For the first few weeks that this is going to be watched, it will be who is in cabinet, who does not go to parliament, what is the power of that Integrity Commission's uh, recommendations, and whether or not, as somebody else recently said, the moral uh, sort of caveat, which is to recuse oneself in the interest of a large organization which has no legal space in which it can be worked out, so you can't force people mm. not to take up the position, whether the moral caveat actually works. So the Integrity uh, Commission has, uh, Committee has said that those that have been implicated in its report, um, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, they've got an opportunity to tell their side of the story, which is quite interesting because you'd think that a report would be compiled with all the facts on the table. Or is this uh, a, a review of the report? What, how, what do you make of... Uh, 
My sense is that it's the kind of Byzantine process of yeah. what happens inside political parties. We're seeing it in one other party in South Africa, in the Democratic Alliance, where people have to be given, um, should we say, due process. So if the report has been compiled, people have to be given the option and the chance to rebut it. Um, and presumably that is what will happen next week. Some people may be very confident that they'll be able to rebut it. Uh, the timing is slightly awkward mm. because this ideally should have been done before the elections, before the lists were compiled. Um, the fact that it wasn't uh, can now be debated as a kind of moot point. It's academic. Yeah. But what's seriously at issue here is the very strange timing. This is happening mm. during the swearing-in process of other MPs. <laughs> Again, it, it, it almost suggests that the elections was the line in the sand. If you get your mandate, you get your power. And now he seems to be exercising it. Yes, well, that's one reading of it. Another mm. reading is that people are suddenly, you know, in a new administration mm. where it's not the interim administration between Valentine's Day 2018 and, you know, May 24th. Yeah. It is a new administration that will come in. That administration, the interim administration, empowered all sorts of state institutions by appointing key figures who will presumably fight back is the wrong word given its loaded phrasing in South Africa but presumably sh steer the ship of state back into where it's expected to function yeah. which is that the prosecuting authorities behave as prosecuting authorities do or should do mm. without fear or favor that this isn't a factional issue that um, the sense of being above the fray is crucial for those state institutions so that they do not become the vehicles through which intra ANC battles are fought and that's crucial that that is the perception of the public and that it is proven in the working out of those okay. institutions. All right, so there's a small matter of, uh, of Deputy President David Mabuza. We'll chat a little bit more about that because what might that mean in the interim? Might we not have a Deputy President? I don't know, but we'll chat about that because right now we're going to cross to uh, Cape Town and we'll find our parliamentary reporter there, Bulerani Philip, who's been watching the proceedings. And the first secret vote was that of uh, finding out who our next speaker will be. Let's find out to how that's been going. Bulerani? Well, thank you so much, uh, Peter, and uh, welcome again uh, to the precinct of Parliament, uh, where we are on the second uh, interval uh, of uh, these proceedings uh, of today. The reason for that uh, interval uh, is to allow uh, the returning officers of Parliament uh, to actually start uh, counting the votes uh, for the Speaker's uh, uh, vote. Uh, of course, uh, the ANC earlier putting up uh, the name of Tandi Modise. Uh, and the DA, on the other hand, has put up uh, the name of uh, Mr. Richard Majola. Of course, uh, MPs had to actually undertake the voting process a short while ago, uh, and that voting process has been done in secret uh, in the floor of the National Assembly. Of course, now we wait uh, for those results, uh, and uh, once those results are ready uh, to be read out by the Chief Justice, uh, uh, the bells of Parliament will be rung for five minutes uh, for all those MPs who've actually left the National Assembly uh, to return to the House in order to get uh, the official results uh, from the Chief Justice. As I look at the visuals coming out of the House, of course, uh, quite a lot of uh, people on the ruling parties, uh, benches uh, who are singing there, of course, uh, passing time uh, as they await uh, those results. Uh, for those viewers uh, who've just joined us uh, this afternoon, uh, of course, uh, earlier in the morning, the process began by that uh, swearing-in uh, ceremony of all the members of the National Assembly all the political parties lining up, uh, taking the oath. Uh, of course, the first person uh, together with nine other ANC MPs was uh, President-elect uh, Cyril Ramaphosa. And uh, on the DA side, uh, the leader of the DA, uh, Mr. Musi Maimane, leading uh, from the front. And of course, uh, the leader of the EFF, uh, Mr. Julius Malima, also leading uh, his delegation. Of course, uh, that process uh, was finished at around uh, 12.30 this afternoon. But because uh, there is a contestation uh, when it came to the election of presiding officers, uh, the House had to adjourn for about uh, two hours in order for the returning uh, officers of Parliament uh, to start uh, preparing 
for the voting process, uh, preparing uh, the ballot papers, uh, and of course, uh, shortly after lunch, uh, that uh, voting process actually ensued. Uh, everyone uh, going uh, to the ballot uh, booths, uh, casting their votes, and uh, of course, uh, putting them in those uh, voting ballot boxes. And as I've said, uh, now we are at that, pro at that point uh, where uh, they are starting uh, to count. Uh, of course, uh, if uh, the numbers uh, of the ruling party stay as they are, we do expect uh, that uh, Mayor Tandi Modise will emerge uh, as the victorious person uh, to occupy uh, the speaker's uh, position. Of course, uh, after that, uh, we do expect that uh, the election is going to move on to uh, the next uh, position, which is that uh, of uh, Deputy Speaker. Of course, uh, the ANC announcing earlier this week that uh, they will be putting up the name uh, of uh, Mr. Lechisa Tsinodi, who has been the Deputy Speaker uh, in the previous parliament. And of course, uh, once that process has been completed, uh, if the TKA, of course, does not uh, put up a name, uh, then uh, that process is going to be completed fast. But if they do put up a name like that uh, in of the speaker's position, of course, we will be in for another long haul as, uh, again, uh, the voting process is going to take uh, a bit of time. But, of course, the big one later on this afternoon is the election of uh, the president. Of course, uh, again, political parties have the democratic right uh, of putting up a candidate. But as I've said, uh, if numbers are anything to go by, the ANC is set to be able to actually push through its candidate, uh, President uh, Cyril Ramaphosa. And uh, of course, uh, the, 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 the process has not gone without a hitch. I just noted, you know, one of the MPs uh, who was uh, being sworn in uh, actually forgot uh, uh, his paper that would uh, be used uh, to read his oath of office. Of course, I suppose uh, he's been nervous. Uh, but of course, other parties uh, like the EFF have actually used the moment uh, to actually, you know, stamp uh, or give uh, their presence in the House. Uh, as their names were called out, uh, uh, some of them were actually going... Uh, to the places where they're going to read the oath. Uh, you know, dancing, uh, you know, there's this uh, dance called Divorce. Uh, leading from the front, of course, was their leader, uh, Mr. Julius Malema. But of course, uh, we do wait uh, for those results, Peter. And uh, I'm sure any time from now, uh, as I look at the visuals coming out of the house, it seems that uh, everyone uh, is settling down. Uh, but of course, uh, we will be keeping an eye uh, when uh, the Chief Justice uh, Mkhwen Mkhwen returns uh, to give us an update as to how the voting went. Uh, on that note, uh, Peter, we'll take it back to you in Johannesburg. Bulelani, thanks very much indeed. Uh, we'll continue to get updates from Bulelani, who's uh, outside Parliament, uh, watching proceedings as uh, the voting continues and the appointment of uh, some of the senior figures in the next Parliament. All right, so there's no question Tandy Mudisa is going to be the next speaker. Was this largely ceremonial by the DA in putting up a challenge and forcing a vote? Possibly, but also I think, you know, they're signalling that they're still the official opposition and that things will simply not go ahead simply because the ANC has dominant numbers. Uh, Ms. Modisa has some controversy around her mm -hmm. um, that keeps being raised in public, but her chair position of the NCOP, I think, is an indication of what can be expected from her. Mm -hmm. And on those occasions where the joint sittings required of her to do some chairing, um, her kind of stern demeanor yeah. and her no-nonsense approach might be what the ANC is signaling is going to be their approach given that the EFF has substantially increased their numbers to 44, mm. which means they'll have more time yeah. to talk, they'll have more people on the list to talk, and they'll have greater numbers in order to do the work that they do as an opposition party. And, uh, you know, we heard uh, the Commander-in-Chief of the EFF this morning uh, talk about Tandi Modise, and he seemed to be welcoming her and uh, whether that was in comparison to Balekambete, I'm not sure, but he seemed to think that uh, she was a little bit fairer. So she's going in, I think, with, uh, I don't know if admiration is the word to use, but perhaps the support of the House in general. Well, you know, we'll see that yeah. from how people vote. Uh, and mm -hmm. so the question, I think, around Tandi Modise will be 
whether she um, will be perceived to be fair, because this is really all about perception. And those perceptions will be stamped in the very first set of sessions, mm -hmm. whether she has the same approach to members of the African National Congress as she has to opposition parties, whether she disciplines equally, um, and whether she you know, does follow the rules as strictly as she has in other, on other occasions, or whether you know, the kinds of things that used to happen mm -hmm. under uh, Malek Ambete's watch of accusations of being seen to be partial, you know, dog her in the first couple of weeks. All right, so they've been sworn in now, so uh, we've got a house, and I, I just wonder, do you get a sense that this sixth parliament, the dynamics are going to be slightly different, or is it going to be much the same? What, what, what's your first sense of what we, we can expect? I think my first sense is that the two big parties, the majority party and the official opposition, going into this parliament slightly bruised. They've mm -hmm. come back with reduced numbers, they've come back with some internal wranglings in both of those organizations um, that will not work themselves out quickly. They're going to take months to do so. Mm -hmm. um, and so what we're likely to see are divisions inside the parties playing out as divisions inside parliament. The trouble in South Africa at the moment, it's the trouble worldwide, is that politicians have access to social media. And so much of this stuff is also going to play themselves out or play itself out in public. So this is not just that it's going to happen in committees in Parliament, mm -hmm. it's going to happen on people's Twitter, Facebook and Instagram updates. Uh, the massive increase, and this is not an overstatement, to go from 25 to 44 in that election, I think is a, going to be a challenge because uh, for the majority party, because the economic freedom fighters have suddenly you know, increased their numbers and so they'll have more time to talk because of their proportion of the vote, and they'll have more people to put out into committees, and that's, I think, going to change the dynamic of parliament. The Freedom Front Plus has also seen a dramatic increase, and so they're likely to do the kind of work that they're interested in in some of those committees by choosing strategically the way in which the ACDP did, um, where to you know, deploy their members and what kind of work they're going to do there. And you know, with a younger membership inside the IFP, possibly taking the leadership, we're likely to see some shifts there as well, particularly on questions that affect uh, dynamics inside KwaZulu-Natal uh, mm -hmm. for that party and for its supporters. All right, so some of the things that we saw play out uh, in, in the last parliament, the party being whipped to take certain decisions that sometimes perhaps didn't make all that much sense, um, but people had to be loyal, and uh, to a point that sometimes the judiciary had to step in and force them to behave in a certain way. Will we see that again, or do you think that that time has passed because of the personalities that might have been involved at that time? No, I think the tensions around um, you know, party loyalty and uh, obedience to and subjection to the Constitution and its demands of elected representatives will continue until, you know, at some legislative level, this is resolved. I don't think it's going to be resolved in this sixth administration. Um, we have the judgments from Justice, Chief Justice Mukhoi mm -hmm. who reminded us that political parties should have every right uh, to require people to behave in certain ways mm -hmm. because it is in relation to their mandate. Um, and that's what they were elected on. Uh, but at the same time, these people have taken oaths of office and therefore they have a duty to the Constitution. And therefore the oversight role of the National Assembly on the executive is going to be under great scrutiny by civil mm -hmm. society organizations, by ordinary citizens, um, and you know, by people who have a concern that there hasn't been enough oversight. We cannot have a situation that we did have in the fifth administration yeah. where the constitutional court has to have found delinquency on the parts of state organs uh, and organs of government, the two arms of government, that didn't behave as they were required by constitution. We cannot have a repeat of the situation where the Chief Justice has to remind us that the President of the Republic of South Africa is a constitutional being. This is not about personality, this is not about individual whim. He is elected into a position and has to act within the confines of the constitution. And that constitution, that return to constitutional order, is I think part of what the New Dawn promised and which is what they will be tested on when it comes to defending people who are accused or are implicated in issues, do they follow the mm. Constitution? All right, so if you're just tuning in, we're talking to uh, Phyllis Glanis, uh, Angela Fick, about uh, the new parliament that uh, has uh, just started uh, its uh, business of uh, the sixth parliament. And uh, we are waiting now for the results. There's been a secret vote uh, to find out who the next speaker of uh, parliament's going to be. Uh, largely, I think most people accept it's probably going to be Tandi Mudisa. And we'll be crossing there live uh, once that uh, plays out. Uh, their voting has happened, and I think they're waiting for the results now. 
Meanwhile, members of the legislature in all the provinces around the country are being sworn in as well. All 42 members of the Western Cape Legislature have been sworn in as uh, they prepare for the composition of the sixth parliament of the province. Now, Western Cape Judge President John Klope presided over the swearing-in ceremony in which the DA's Alan Winder was elected as Western Cape Premier. In Gauteng, David Makura has been nominated as the ANC Premier a candidate for the province, uh, one that he'd won with 38 votes to, th to 28, I think it was, to uh, the oppositions. In Kozali Natal, the MEC for uh, Economic Development in the province, uh, Sitleza Galala has uh, been nominated as the Premier-elect and uh, Dr. Zamani Saul has been officially elected as the Premier of the Northern Cape. Now, ANC Ward 52 councillor in the Etequini Metro, Boxer Zulu, says that he fears for the safety of his family after the murder of two Metro police officers outside his uh, Bambai home north of Durban on Monday night. The two officers were stationed outside his home for the past year as it was believed that his life was in danger. Both officers, an elderly man close to the retirement age and a young woman, were shot and killed by unknown men. Zulu says that he suspects that the incident may be related to service delivery issues. Police say three armed men ambushed a metro police van which was standing on guard outside the councillor's home. They overpowered the police, took their service papers.
Goba Goba Tina Sifu Numa Chola Goba Tina I think Richard Machola is one.
Can Honourable uh, Honourable uh, Madlingozi, please, can you fill in the gap in the meantime? Sia Godola, Ringo, Sia Godola. Now, Funas Patal is not Patal and Cook. It is true, Ringo, you are paid. Tola, Tola Ringo. Ringo singing a casa at a signing as in Maliga Lok. Is it that cold in the air? Sandela Standwa Ringo Jagotola. Nanini, na. I saw one and a man in a set to Hola Galoga Sakola. Sakotola. Sondela Ringo. Sondela. Comrades, I'm a party agent. I have to make a bet. Tenning a full goose go to Lisa Ringo says to Leganga. Party agents. Kuya banda kwa ANC ne? Ni akotola nyani ne? Ringo zakpata la galoku. It won't be for free, rest assured. Nen naskola sagnez mali yao. Zisa nukka la apa nawe. Susan Putume is a tanko dollar. How cool a ringo. Lento ya vusak faneli. We don't have copyrights.
Ngena ringo ngena. Wena watengi sa mutengi si mutengi. Please be seated. It is time to announce the results. <clears throat> The result of the ballot are as follows. Ms. T.R. Mudise, 250. Mr. T.R. Majola, 83. Spoiled. Spoiled ballot 17, and I apologize for the delay. The reconciliation of the ballot papers with, um, I forgot the terminology now, this which they tear from took long to happen, and because thoroughness is key, we had to spend as much time as was necessary to do the right thing. So our apologies. We 
tambu tumu tande. In terms of item six of part A of schedule three to the constitution, I accordingly declare Honorable T.R. Mudise, duly elected speaker of the National Assembly. expedite this because from the look of things we have a long day. Honorable Modise, on behalf of all present, I have the singular honor to congratulate you on your election. As the Honorable Speaker of this House, and I now call upon the Sergeant at Arms to conduct the Honorable Speaker to the chair. Where is the sergeant at arms? Oh, there she is. Please be seated. Please allow me to thank the Chief Justice of the Republic of South Africa, the President-elect, honorable members, ladies and gentlemen. I am honored by the nomination and the election to be Speaker of the National Assembly, the second chamber of the Parliament of South Africa. I understand fully the struggle to move South Africa forward, to recognize all her people, to recognize all languages, all cultures and traditions of South Africa. As elected representatives, we are both the products and custodians of the values enshrined in our constitutions. These values set the tone for how we conduct ourselves and how we manage the affairs of our people for the common good. I understand the continuing battle for dignity and respect for the majority of South Africans. I understand the differences and diversity of citizens and others who reside within our borders. I also understand the responsibilities of public representatives. I further understand the responsibility of Parliament as a site for debate, for public education, and as a defender of all law, rights, and liberties. I also understand the role of the presiding officers as enablers of debate and protectors of the rights of the public and the public representative to hold the executive to account and to capacitate themselves, these public representatives in this house, to adequately use the power of the string, the, st the, the, the power of the purse strings to hold and to continue holding the executive to account. I, together with other presiding officers, must at all times be fair and unbiased. The decorum of the house and the image of parliament must be maintained. We do not represent ourselves, honorable members. We represent the people of our country. So at the start of this term, 
Let us represent those who send us to parliament well. Let us respect those who are asking us, who are entrusting us with the running of their country. Let us respect the tiniest of the, of the voice of those who got elected into this house. In other words, it doesn't matter how angry you might be or how different the views of the other member must be. This member in this house represents a constituency out there. And before we get into the throat of this member, we must remember there are thousands of people who voted for this member to come and represent their voice and interest in this house. I just wanted to say that um, I have learned a lot working with Mayor, former Speaker Mbete, and the House Chairpersons. I hope that the tradition of consulting, of ensuring that the business of Parliament is shared accordingly will continue. And I hope that we will continue to run this Parliament of South Africa in a very dignified manner. I want to thank you once more for the trust you have placed in me, and I thank you. <laughs> Honorable members, the House will now proceed with the nomination process for the election of the Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly. In terms of um, the procedure set out in Part A of Schedule 3 of the Constitution and in accordance with the rules of the Chief Justice of the Republic of South Africa. Members are reminded that there will be no debates and that each nomination must be submitted on the prescribed form and be duly seconded. There will now be an opportunity for the nomination of the candidates for the election of the Deputy Speaker. Is there any member wishing to nominate the Honorable the Deputy Speaker? Honorable Speaker. Yes, Please sir. proceed, Honorable Buertis. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. Alvin Buertis from the African National Congress. I hereby nominate the Honorable Solomon the Chief Satsanoli, to be the speaker, the deputy speaker of the National Assembly, Gabonga, for the sixth uh, parliament, uh, honorable speaker. Thank you. Please, is there any member wishing to second the nomination for the deputy speaker? Is there any member wishing Honorable Mkiza, is this right? Yes. Um, I, Tlenguwe Butlem Mkiza, rise on behalf of the African National Congress to second the nomination of Solomon Lichisa uh, Tsinoli as the Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly. Thank you, ma'am. Please submit the form. Honorable Solomon Lechisa Tsenudi, do you accept the nomination as Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly? Uh, I do. Thank you very much. Honorable members, the, the form is in order. I now proceed to ask the House if there are any further nominations. The Honorable Malema. I want to check if I'm allowed to nominate uh, Mam Kaula. <laughs> All members of the House are eligible. <laughs> oh. 
all the members. Honorable Malema, all members are eligible to be elected. Are you saying that you are, in fact, nominating Mekaula? Thank you very much. Is there any other party that wishes to nominate? Honorable members, I do not see any hand. Madam Speaker. Honorable Steinhazen. Our candidates just withdraw, the Honorable Kawila, so we don't have someone to second. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Honorable members, there being no other contender, I declare that the Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly has been duly elected. Honorable Lechisa Senudi, on behalf of all of us, I congratulate you on your election as Deputy Speaker. You now have the opportunity to address the House. Madam Speaker, congratulations and thank you to you first as a priority. And um, Comrade President Designate and uh, all members present here, I'm very grateful for what you've just done. Uh, I would like to start by thanking the people who brought us here with the hope that we will work with them. Uh, to fight effectively poverty, inequality, and unemployment. I do also want us to thank them for returning the African National Congress to lead. I also wish that we do not forget those who were with us inside here and in the corridors here uh, who we should remember. I would like to specifically mention uh, Eric Mchali, Fezeka uh, Loliwe, and Moschigani. Their spears have not fallen on the ground. Uh, the struggles to reclaim cleanliness, corruption free. Uh, management of the affairs of the state across the board continues. I do wish finally to thank the African National Congress for entrusting us with the responsibility uh, to carry out this job. I can not also thank Honorable Tandimu Dise in her previous capacity, Honorable Papitau, as well as the rest of the House chairpersons in both houses for a very warm, cooperative relationship that helped us to work better. Thank you very much, all of you honorable members. We hope we will cooperate. I undertake to do so as long as we agree on the important issues of conduct in the House. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker. Congratulations once again. Honorable members, that concludes the process to elect the Deputy Speaker of the House. We now proceed to call on the religious leaders to bless the house. And I... Okay. Okay. Honorable Mulana Sabri Davids from the Muslim Judicial Council you may have the floor. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praises to God, Lord of the universe. Ar Rahmanir Rahim, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Maliki Yawmid Deen, Master of the Day of Judgment. Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'een Thee alone do we worship 
and thee alone we ask for help. Ihdina sirat al mustaqim, guide us to the straight path. Sirat al ladina an amta alayhim, the path of those on whom your favor is. The ghayr al maghdubi alayhim wal dalin, not the path of those on whom your anger is, nor the path of those on whom uh, those who have gone astray. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allahumma rizq raisan al hikmat alati yahtaj ilayha li qiyadat biladina bil adala wa salam. O Allah, dear God, grant our leadership the wisdom they require to lead our country with justice and peace. Allahumma aati raisan al ruyat alati yahtaj ilayha li yakudana ila al rakha. O Allah, dear God, grant our leadership the vision they need to lead us to prosperity. Allahumma amni khiyadatana al khudra ala ayyaku awdali khiyadatana fi ayy waqti mada. O Allah, dear God, grant our leadership the ability to be the best leadership our country has ever seen. Allahumma arshid qaidana li ittikhadi awdala qararat allati tunasibu baladana. O Allah, dear God, guide our leaders and our president-elect to make the best decisions that are best suited to our country. Allahumma anzili salam wal istiqrar fi biladina. O Allah, send down your divine peace and stability in our country. Allahumma aj'al khilafatina khilafatina ni'matan wa wasilata li ta'awun al-mushtarik buddha al-nadri anil urqi wa al-deen. O oh Allah, dear God, make our differences a blessing and a means of mutual cooperation for the prosperity of our country. Allahumma kama nas'aluka hadihi ni'am alayna, kathalika natlubu minka an tamnaha al-ummata al-Falastiniyya, al-Huriyya wa salam. O oh Allah, dear God, as we ask you these blessings upon us, so too we ask that you grant freedom to the Palestinian people the Palestinian nation, and so to all oppressed nations all around the world. Allah maftah lana bil khair. O Allah, we beg that you open our proceedings with good. Wakhtim lana bil khair, and that we see it with good. Waj'al awaqiba umurina bil khair, and that the outcome of our sitting and our proceedings be only good. Biyadik al khair, for indeed all good is in your hands. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad, and all praise be upon Prophet Muhammad, Peace be upon him and his brother prophets. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. And all praise be to God. Thank you very much, Mulana. We proceed with Chief Rabbi Warren Goldstein, a representative of the Jewish community. Bibona shil olam, master of the universe. We humbly ask you at this critical moment in South Africa's history to bless President Cyril Ramaphosa and all the members of Parliament, the members of Parliament who have been sworn in today with abundant success in their sacred work for our country. Bless them with the wisdom and the courage to restore morality and integrity to government and indeed to all of society to instill within the hearts and minds of every person charged with a holy task of governing the affairs of the noble citizens of this country, a sense of sacred mission, of duty and honesty which will permeate every decision and action taken in the name of the government of the Republic of South Africa. May you bless the President and all the members of Parliament with success in unleashing the awesome promise and potential of this country which has been blessed by you with people of heroism, courage and ability, with magnificent natural beauty and abundant resources and infrastructure, with glorious freedom, democracy and protected human rights, all of which have been waiting for so long for inspired ethical leadership to enable this country to emerge in all of its bountiful possibilities with prosperity and blessing for all. Bless all the members of this parliament 
so that they may be the ones chosen by you to bring out all of these great blessings. May you bless them at this historic moment that the ancient priestly blessings which were recited in your holy temple in Jerusalem and which are recited to this day in our synagogues be fulfilled by you for our members of government. Yevarechecha Adonai v'yishmerecha May God bless you and protect you. Yair Adonai panav elecha v'yichunecha May God shine his face towards you and be gracious to you. Yisa Adonai panav elecha v'yaseim lecha shalom May God turn his face to you and establish peace for you. May this be your will and let us say Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi. We proceed to Priest Guru Krishna, a representative of the Hindu community. On behalf of the Hindu community of South Africa and from the Western Cape Religious Leaders Forum, may I extend loving greetings with the richest blessings of Paramatma, God Almighty, to the Honorable Speaker, Deputy Speaker, and the President-elect of the Sixth Democratic Republic of South Africa and all the elected members of the Parliament, Prem Namaskar and Vanaka. By reciting the sacred verses from the Hindu scriptures, may we seek the blessings of Paramatma to bless this Sixth Democratic Parliament to run without any obstacles and attain success in every act that they engage upon. Ari Hivom Vakratunda Mahakaya Sudya Koti Samaprabha Nirviknam Gurume Deva Sarvakari Chusarvadaha Om Bhur Bhavasubaha Tasavitur Varenyam Bargo Devasya Dimahim Dio Yonaha Prichota Yahatum Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Mageshwaraha, Guru Chat Chat Param Brahma, Tasmai Sri Guravi Namaha, Ulagalam Munarndo Dar Kariyavan, Nila Ulavi and Ir Malivanian, Adakil Sodian Nambala Tadavan, Malar Silam Badiwal Tivananguam. O adorable Lord of mercy and love. Salutations and adorations unto thee. Grant us inner spiritual strength and may we promote the dignity and honor of all South Africans by adopting the principles of Satya, the truth, Ahimsa, the non violence, and Sarvodaya, the well beings of all in our rainbow nation. May we all join in prayer to seek the blessings of God Almighty upon the President elect and the incoming ministers of various departments with wisdom and strength to serve the people of South Africa and to fight against poverty and unemployment. May we all join in prayer as we say Om Sarve Sham Swastir Bhavatu May auspiciousness be unto all Sarve Sham Shantir Bhavatu May be peace be upon all Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu, may fullness be unto all. Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu, may prosperity be unto all. Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha, may all be happy. Sarve Shantu Niramayaha, may all be free from all disabilities. Sarve Bhadrani Bhashyantu, may all be from all pains and sufferings. Machat Tukka Bhagbaved. May none suffer from any kinds of sorrow. Asatoma Sadgamaya, lead us from untruth to truth. Tamasoma Jodirngamaya, lead me from darkness into light. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. May there be peace, peace. Peace be upon all. Thank you very much. We proceed to Reverend Paulus Villagazi, a representative of the ZCC, the Zionist Christian Church. How are you? 
Honorable members, we shall now proceed with the election of the President of the Republic. I now call upon the Chief Justice of the Republic of South Africa. This is now the time for nominations for President of the Republic of Sudan. Members, Any nominations in terms of the set procedure? Yes, Honorable Member. Thank you very much, Honorable Justice. I, Pemi Majodina, hereby ekameni lezikitikiti zomzanz Africa. Libitong la di kiti kiti sabayemi ba Afrika bura di pagamisa kutuluma ngo nesi wamo nesi tozela omnye wabantu ana bom kuba kulum zanz Afrika a constitutionalist a former union leader lawo ngutata matamela point of order. Point of order, Chief yes. Justice. Yes, Honorable Member. Chief Justice, with uh, the greatest respect, the Honorable Member must rise to nominate a candidate. Not do a poem here. We're not here for poems. We, we don't have time. We must serve the people of South Africa. We're not here for you. Please, uh, Chief Justice, with the greatest respect. You will praise her in your kitchen somewhere. Thank you, Honorable Ngozi. Honorable Member, the nomination, please. Kialibua, Chief Justice. I hereby nominate Mr. Matamela Cyril 
Ramaphosa. Thank you. Thank you. Is the nomination seconded? Thank you, Chief Justice. I, Madala David Ndombela, rise to second the nomination of, of the Honorable Cyril Madamela Ramaphosa to be the President of the Republic of South Africa. Thank you. Well, as far as I know, you're still president until, uh, until Friday. Honorable President, do you accept the nomination? Yes, I do accept the nomination. Please, uh, thank you. This nomination is in order. Is there any other nomination? Is there any other nomination? Well, is there anything? No, no, it's all right. Okay. Very well. <clears throat> I was deliberately looking around because I was sent a message. I just wanted to make sure that uh, that message has been withdrawn. There are no further nominations. Only one candidate has been nominated, namely Honorable Cyril Matamela Ramaphosa. The nomination is in order, and in terms of item 5 of part A of Schedule 3 to the Constitution, and I accordingly declare the Honorable Cyril Matamela Ramaphosa duly elected President of the Republic of South Africa. I seize this opportunity to congratulate you, Mr. President, on your election as President of the Republic of South Africa. I hand over to the Speaker. Thank you very much. Honorable members, 
Is there any party that wishes to make remarks? The Honorable Maiman. And uh, let me first and foremost say, uh, let me congratulate firstly Speaker and Deputy Speaker. I think it's, it's a crucial time in our nation and we need a parliament that will work for the people of South Africa. And therefore I want to urge that from the leadership of this House, we have been entrusted with the most privileged duty our nation could ever ask us to do which is to serve the people of this country. And therefore, I want to send our congratulations and call upon all of us as members of parliament to say, our objective here is to serve the people of this country, and we better never fail them at a moment such as this one. I would also like to say to Ntadesel Ramaphosa, this election takes place at a time when 10 million of our people are unemployed. It takes place at a time where our citizens are feeling unsafe. It takes place at a time where our young people need to get through school. You, sir, have been entrusted with the great privilege of leading our nation at such a time as this. I want to say from our party and from me personally, I wish you great success. And I wish to say to you that when the decisions that you take are for the interests of our nations and for the people of this country, we will be the first ones to support you. It is also to say that I know that when those interests are about shielding those who need to take accountability for the time that has come before us, for those who have looted from our nation, I wish to say, sir, we will be holding you to account that those members who have looted from our country actually see jail. <laughs> Lastly, I wish to say that the Ramapos, may this be a season of better collaboration. We may have been opponents, we may have stood on opposite aisles, but more than anything, both of us are proud, proud patriots of our country and we've been elected to serve our people. And therefore, may it be a term where in this sixth parliament we can collaborate better, serve our people better, so that this country be the country that we're destined for it to become. So I thank you, Rakyal. Thank you very much. The Honorable Malema. Thank you very much. I want to take this opportunity to congratulate Mbogoto Mkonto Wesizwe Tandi Mudise, the militant and uncompromising woman who led from the front when it was not fashionable to do so. Here, the ANC has managed to deploy a trusted force of our people. And for that, we congratulate you. We hope we'll work together, Metandi. There will be heated moment. There will be a robust debate. You should never degenerate and be partisan when the House degenerate. You should remain a speaker and be a speaker of all of us. Because if you degenerate, you'll never get this house in order. Always know that you might be coming from a particular political party, but sitting up there, you now preside over all of us. We are all your children, and you must not discriminate us. Treat us equally with respect. We'll return the favor. Once we feel targeted and neglected and rejected, we shall show you the other side of us. So if we all treat each other with respect, we have nothing to worry about. We grew under your leadership, and we know when we see you, we see Winnie Mandela in action. 
and we are happy that you are not part of the people who once denounced and disowned Winnie Mandela. You stood with her when it was not fashionable to do so. That's why you are a dependable force of our people. Deputy Speaker, we congratulate you and we hope that we'll work together for the next uh, five years. You had a difficulty with 25. I don't know how you'll manage with 44. Uh, I hope that uh, you'll, you'll indeed try to navigate through and make sure that we succeed. Comrade President, we congratulate you and we hope that you will be a president of a corrupt free government and you will not subject yourself to views of factionalism. There are people who thrive through patronizing presidents. They tell you all you want to hear and as a result you are unable to make informed decisions because you surrender yourself with praise singers and yes men and yes women. I've seen young men and women from the benches of the ANC. Maybe it is time to consider them so that they can come to you with fresh ideas, with new ideas, and if they don't like positions, they will be able to be honest with you. You need someone who's going to be honest with you. The position you occupy needs someone who's going to be honest with you because those who failed were told many a times that they are right even when they were wrong. Even when the constitutional court said to them, you are wrong. Even when the public protector said to them, you are wrong. Those around them kept on telling them they are right. And that's why they got it wrong. You must never ever listen to those who say you are right against the courts of South Africa, against chapter 9 institutions of South Africa. Those are the institutions which are meant to defend our democracy and they will forever uh, guide us. So, President, there are people who served long in cabinet from Mandela's time. I have nothing against them. And I don't know why they don't make your work easy by coming to you and say we are not available, maybe as advisors, so that they give room, they give room to new ideas. Comrade President, Stellenbosch is a big problem. We know your proximity to Stellenbosch. We know your proximity to, St to Oppenheimers. We have not elected Oppenheimers. We have not elected Stellenbosch yet. I told your predecessor in 2011 that we have not elected the Guptas. We elected him. And he must lead us. He refused to listen to that. We are warning you, President. We have not elected the Ruperts yet. We have not elected the Oppenheimers. Listen to the collective wisdom of people you are elected with, not white monopoly capital. It will not be here to defend you. Once you listen to white monopoly capital, you must know that you are likely not to finish your term. All the best, President. We are here. We are watching you and will continue to engage you openly, not in secret. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Speaker, and Honorable Deputy Speaker, Honorable Chief Justice, Your Excellency, our President, Honorable Members, I consider it, Madam Speaker, to be a privilege for me to congratulate His Excellency, our elected President of the Republic. On behalf of the Inkara Freedom Party, I wish you strength, I wish you wisdom, and I wish you support. As the oldest member of this August House, it is my prerogative to speak about the past. 
I've served my country for more than 60 years, and I've witnessed leadership of Ms. J.G. Stradom, H.F. Ferwood, B.J. Foster, Maria F. Leon, P.W. Porter, and President F. W. T. Clerk. And I had the privilege of serving this country, Your Excellency, under our President, Mr. Mandela, and also our President, Mr. Mpeg. I've entered this house alongside these great sons of the soil. In all these years, I've seen our country at crossroads more than once, and I've come to recognize the leadership it takes to navigate South Africa safely to the right path. Undoubtedly, we stand now at the crossroads again, desperate to move away from the shadows of corruption towards the light of growth, investment, unity, and justice. It will take a unique leader to navigate this course. Such leader deserves support from among his own ranks, as well as from us in the opposition benches. We're not here to overlook mistakes or to turn a blind eye to wrongs, but we're here to secure the best interests of our country. If you are serving the best interests of our country, Your Excellency, I can assure you of, of uh, our support. If you do the right thing for South Africa, I would always do that. This is the kind of constructive opposition we've tried to give to this House. History has chosen President Mahosa for the present task. May he be the leader that our country needs at this crucial time. I thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honorable Grunewald. Geachte speaker, ik weet u is Afrikaans goed machtig. Ik ken u al sinds 1994. Van die vrijheidsfront plus wel ons voor u zeer bij hartelijk geluk. Ons denk je is een rechte kandidaat. En dat u die taak als speaker van hierdie huis met gezag, met respect, met orde en weer de herstel van integriteit in die nationale vergadering zal bestuur. Baie sterkte, die achtbare Malema het naar u verwijs, u was een soldaat, ik weet u was een rechte soldaat. Die mense wat maak of hulle soldate was. Jy het die discipline. En ek glo en ek weet, jy sal dit hand af. Baie sterkte en baie geluk. Dank u. Honorable President, Firstly, I want to congratulate you as elected for the next five years. But if I say that, Honorable President, I also want to say that there's a huge responsibility on your shoulders. The people of South Africa want hope. They want hope for the future. That's what we need in South Africa. And if I say that, and when I say that, I also want to say to you that part of that responsibility is that you are now also the president of the people, all the people of South Africa, South African citizens. And therefore, you must ensure that the interest of the people of South Africa is more important than the interest of your political party, the African National Congress. You have certain constitutional obligations Section 83. You have to ensure and enhance nation building in South Africa. And it's actually a pity that I hear again the narrative of white people still doing this and doing that. Honorable President, it will be your task to ensure that that narrative just disappears. 
that we are all South Africans and the Freedom Front Plus always say to, to, that to, to. we want to build South Africa. Throughout my campaign I've used the comparison to say that you cannot be a tree in a bush and if the bush is on fire, think that you're not going to burn. You're also going to burn. We are in South Africa together. South, the Freedom Front Plus wants to build South Africa. Maar as ons sê ons wil Zuid-Afrika bouw, dan sê ons ook dat die rechten van minderhede moet erkend word en allemaal moet billig en rechtverdig behandel word. Ons wil sien dat daar rechtverdige behandeling is. Ons wil sien dat daar een wil is by u as president dat allemaal moet handen vat om Zuid-Afrika te bouwen. Ik wil ook voor u sê, dit was voor mij een bijzondere geleentheid voor ochtend toen die hoofrechter op zijn knieën gegaan het en gebid het. It is a pity, honorable chief justice, that you did not have a microphone with you, so that the whole of South Africa could hear what you are praying. But as a Christian, I also want to say that that is the correct thing that you did this morning because this is what South Africa need. We have to pray to ensure that there is hope for the future. And come and say for the Achbare President, as a Christian, we will also say dat als ons ons land wil genees, dan moet u maar 2 Kronieke 7 vers 14 gaan lees. Want die Heere sê vir ons, as ons ons self verootmoedig, en ons ons sondes belei, dan sal hy ons uit die hemel hoor, en ons land genees. Honorable President, the Freedom Front Plus, we say, let's stop fighting for a better past. Let's fight for a better future. In een gebed zal ons urven. Baie geluk en baie sterke. The Honorable Mishra. Honorable Chief Justice, Honorable Speaker, Honorable President, I stand on behalf of the African Christian Democratic Party to wish you God's best during this five-year term. But may I remind the Speaker, as I also congratulate her for being elected as a Speaker of the National Assembly, that there are people out there who are not happy to hear about the South African Parliament, particularly the National Assembly, being a circus. There are people out there that are saying the decorum of Parliament should be restored. There are people out there who want to see leaders who respect one another, leaders who operate in line with the Constitution leaders who understand that people who differ from you are not enemies and therefore they would want to see order in this place those who refer to your past as a soldier know you as a person of order so the acdp requests that let the people of south africa see that there is a change in this house that there is order so I congratulate you and hope that the expectations and wishes of South Africans are going to be realized. And to the president, we understood that there are things you could not do earlier because you were enacting 
interim president, but now you have been fully elected. We expect the president to show strength that did not show the first few years when he was acting. We expect the president to be tough on corruption. Corruption is the number one giant that is facing South Africa, and we are hoping that the president now having all the powers of the president, he will be able to deal with corruption wherever it raises its head. That the president will know that he's not just the president of a political party, the ANC only, but he's the president of the rest of South Africa. And may expectations of the international community and South Africans in particular not be disappointed. You'd be surprised, Mr. President to know that there are people who are not members of the ANC who voted for you because they had hope that if we give him the chance, he's going to deliver. And my wish and prayer is that you will become bold, bold to act when you have to act. My prayer is that you will not fear the face of men. My prayer for you, Mr. President, is that you will be like a living fish you know, a dead fish follows a stream. It goes where the stream goes. But a living fish can turn against the stream and go where he wants to go. So I pray and I wish that, Mr. President, you'll show your strength, you'll show courage, you'll show boldness. If there is corruption on your side, you'll act decisively. And when there's corruption on my left, you'll also act decisively. I pray you that the next five years, will become some of the best since the days of the late Mr. Mandela. Thank you, and God bless you. Sir. Rale Boha, the Honorable Retired General Holomisa. Uh, order. Madam Speaker, Honorable President and Honorable Members, Zegas Nopala deserve congratulator. The Princegile Nekesle Apple Coyo. Oh, Nimonulele. Who is President? Congratulations, sir. And I hope that uh, in solving the problems of this country, you, are, you will apply a non partisan approach. In that way, you will get a lot of support from this house. Thank you. Thank you very much. The Honorable Mohammed Hendricks. Assalamu alaikum. Honorable Speaker, the liberation movement has delivered its best speaker, it's delivered its best deputy speaker, it has delivered the best president, inshallah. I want to share with this house the words of Chief Albert Latuli where he said, let my people go. And this has a special meaning for al Jamaa. It means that the president of the country, or the leader of the country, must also listen to the voices of those from the liberation movement. I want to ask the president, to do that and to ignore other voices. Ignore voices that wants to spill blood and, and distract you from your very important way forward. Aljama, we are the new kid on the block. We 
Our forefathers started the liberation movement 325 years ago. They were the first fighters. I told that to Honorable uh, 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 Malema, Julius Malema, that the first fighters came from Malaysia. And they came to, f to conquer colonialism in Cape Town, and there's still some work to be done. We hope to make a contribution in that regard. Congratulations, Mr. President. Thank you, sir. The Honorable Jilin. Madam Speaker, I want to congratulate you and the Deputy for your um, election this afternoon. Uh, and I want to promise you that I will behave. <laughs> Mr. President, I remember 25 years ago when we first arrived in this house. There was a relatively young man who was leading us um, in writing the final constitution. And that was you. I'm, I'm not saying you're not young anymore, but you were. <laughs> <laughs> and during that time, Mr. President, we were in a country with unprecedented hope. We only wanted the best for our country. In fact, the whole world joined us to bring an end to racial division and class division. Now, following a decade of despair, the formerly young, the formerly young man returns to Parliament to lead us. But what is way down on you, Mr. President, is the expectation of our people. The expectation that we will see a mature government, and a government of integrity, a government that can deliver better services, that can deal with inequality and injustices. So, I would like to congratulate you, Mr. President, on your election as the first um, uh, for the first office of our land and I want to offer to you the support of good and the love of good. But the love is not unconditional, Mr. President. You may get unconditional love from that side of the house. But we would like to see that we hold government it, um, accountable in a constructive way, in a way that can build this country to make sure that the most vulnerable and the poor people in our country deserve better. I think the elected have spoken and we must respect that. I do hope that we can all agree that it's unacceptable that we had such a low voter turnout. And we must interrogate why. Because God forbid, if 25 years into our new democracy, many of our people decide to stay at home. So I'm sure, Mr. President, we can make progress by bringing and making our people more responsive to our democracy and participating. And it's good we will be there to help. And may God bless Africa. And may God bless the leaders of Africa. I thank you. Thank you very much. The Honorable Sibisi. Uh, Madam Speaker and the Deputy Speaker, Gimi La Gifisa Ukuluma on behalf of our president, we NFP, Visa Jamakwaza, Uti, we and Bongela, Goguti, Namsange, you have been elected as U speaker, not deputy speaker, Uti, Ufisa, Utilum Sebenzi, Ninga Ubamba, no party say, Owe Kalizabandu. 
uh, to our elected honorable president Matamela Ramaphosa uthi kosikazi uvize kamagwaza msibuzi izwe thobekile ukuthi uphinde wathola ithuba elifana nalelo ukuthi uqokwe bese uhola izwe uthi abantu baseningizimu Afrika bakhombise ukuwethemba ukhumbule emongameni ukuthi akusibona abantu abawu ANC kuphela abakhombise ukuwethemba ukhumbule emongameni kunabantu emakhaya lasuka khona njengoba kuzoqala ubusika abangeke bawathola amanzi ukhumbule emongameni ukuthi kunabantu abakuvotele bengenawo umhlaba Age sisheshi sege utaba lomhlaba abantu emakhaya baswele bahluphekile ungakushayi indiva lokho ukhumbule emongameli ukulusa o premier kuma provinces aholo ANC intuthuko bayiletha inketha bakhona kunendawo la mangwe suona u ANC yonke kuyithola intuthuko impilo esesiphilile u25 years now as nfp we are saying we want to make change and we want to see change sikufisela inhlanhla siyokweseka kuko konke oyokwenza oyothuthukisa kukhathalele abantu baseningizimu Africa la kumele sikusekele khona siyokusekela la okuyobe kungahambi khona kahle siyokusho mongameli ukuthi lokhu akukuhle inhloso yethu su NFP sifisa ukubona izwe lethu eningizimu Africa lidlondlobala likhula ngisho nakwezomnotho we thank you The Honourable Nyanso. Madam Speaker, President, on behalf of the PAC, the Party of Land and Revolution, we congratulate you, President. And in congratulating you, Mr. President, See, a fifth parliament was in the hands of the wrong people. And we hope and wish that the sixth parliament will repossess and restore our land to its rightful owners. Congratulations. Okay. The Honorable Zungulu. Titanda Ubulisa, Nina Nonke, Honorable Members. Um, Tatumonga Mil, Tikifan ba, Bonka Banba, South Africa, Banovu Yonga Lomzuz. Tabe Bona I Parliament, Inokolo, Inokwang. And Lendo, Singa Kangela, Ku Chief Justice, Otanda Zile, Namflanjo, a Mema Utiko, Ukuze, Sikwazu Kubang, and Angela Skubengal. In the Sikrela, I see ATM. Kokela Elizwe, Ukumbu, Lugoti, U Chief Justice, Umiso Tito Pamque to see song. Where's the Nakis, the Koya South Africa, Lilonke Elizwe, Lady Lipella, Akuko Namia, Umtu Ayed, or Onawas, Kostas Lula, Sitting Okuba song, as is the political party Sitlangan, Sitre Lukutu Tito Kokel, Lukuzu Slangan is a silly parliament, Ukuze Sisev, Aban Balape South Africa. Aban Balape South Africa, Sebe Zulile, Ukufuna Itemba, Bafuna Ukuta Zulula, Wenake Ezikoyo. We are tired of having hope. We want practical solutions to the problems that we have in the country. As the ATM, we want to commit ourselves to the parliament that will put South Africa first. And if you also put South Africa first, you will be working with us. I thank you. Thank you, sir. The Honorable Likota. Order. Order. <laughs> Madam, Madam Speaker, thank you very much. I, because I've been a presiding officer before, I think, 
because I've been a presiding officer before, I think I may venture to give you advice on how to be a presiding officer. Well, I'm not saying I'm an expert. I say I will venture, unless I'm not allowed. Am I allowed? Well, I'm not allowed to venture, so I won't, Madam Speaker. Mr. President, uh, having congratulated the Speaker, let me just say I have not been a president before, and I have never, I have not even been an acting president. Never. So I will not venture to give you advice on how to do the task you have been given. I'd like to congratulate you that you are in this position. Like all citizens of our country, we will place our faith in your hands. We'll pray and we will follow assiduously as you do your work. And we will provide what support we can give. If we think we are about to be in trouble, we will indicate that to you that no, we think that now this is not right. But we will come and say it here and say it to you. Not in some shabby or tavern or drinking uh, places where you cannot hear what we think about that. So I'd like to say congratulations on your rise to this highest office of our land. You can count on all of us. Thank you, sir. The Honorable Gallo. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for the opportunity. At least today you didn't give us three minutes. Thank you for that. Honorable President, I'm sure you know that uh, in each and every human being, there are two fighting spirits, the positive one and the negative one. We will work tirelessly with you, Honorable President, to defeat the spirit of negativity inside our bodies. Because if you can defeat the spirit that is negative inside your body, you will be able to work for all South Africans. Because when you see a black person scavenging from the dust bins, you will know that you are not doing the correct thing. It cannot be correct that after 25 years, of the so-called democracy, but the black people in this country are still kissing the dust. There is something wrong. Honorable President, we are going to support you only when you are assisting the blacks in this country to be at the level of economic freedom that will satisfy their needs. Otherwise, Honorable President, it's too late. The people of South Africa have given you the last chance. You and your ANC, you, ask, you must do the correct thing. Lastly, Honorable President, please, we are in a coalition. Don't, 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 don't forget the plea of the people of Matatiel. Don't forget the people of Matatiel. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Gallo. Oh, Honorable Gallo, the, uh, um, I'm simply saying 
Um, if you were a brand new member to the house, I would not talk about your finger, but please remember the rules about finger pointing. Next time, control the finger. Honorable members, may I ask us to suspend the house for three minutes? The bells will be rung to bring us all back. Thank you. House is suspended. Right, so they're taking uh, a bit of a break, a three-minute break that's been called by the speaker. If you've just tuned in, you're watching uh, live pictures uh, from uh, the National Assembly where the new speaker in uh, the uh, Assembly, uh, Tandi Modise, is uh, running the business of the day. She was elected a little bit earlier on, getting 250 votes in the 400-seat uh, Assembly. And uh, she has uh, been now guiding us through the congratulatory speeches that are being put forward uh, by the various parties and most of the speakers uh, a common theme that's uh, coming through has been one of uh, congratulations uh, warm welcome but also saying that uh, mr. president we want to work together we want a new order there was even a reference to uh, the last 10 years uh, I think it was Patricia DeLille who was uh, talking about uh, uh, a difficult decade, a decade of despair that she called it. But a lot of people saying uh, this is an opportunity for you to set a new path, a new course at a critical time uh, where South Africa sees uh, unemployment levels of uh, 10 million. But also it, the, the job comes with great expectations. All right, let me introduce uh, my guests that are going to help us unpack some of the things that are coming out. We have uh, Mr. Majola, leadership expert, and uh, Mr. Ndo, who's uh, a political commentator. Thank you very much indeed, gentlemen, for joining okay. us. Mm. All right, so you've heard the speeches, and it seems that, uh, by and large, they're saying, well done, congratulations, we're going to give you a chance. Mr. Ndo? Yes, indeed. Um, it, it actually started with the Democratic Alliance. Uh, uh, I could see the, the facial expression from the leader of the uh, main opposition party to say, President, indeed, we, we stood side by side, uh, opposed to each other during the elections, but now it's time uh, to work together. Um, and you, you could see a sense of, of, of humility on the part of the Democratic Alliance. Mm -hmm. But also at the same time, you see an element of congratulations from the EFF and the Freedom <coughs> Front and the IFP, but also at the same time you also see a sense of celebration to say we have actually increased our numbers within the National mm -hmm. Assembly. But indeed, uh, the, process, the, the processes for me went on very well and there is a general acceptance of the presidency mm -hmm. of Mr. Ramaphosa. And uh, the EFF, was, uh, I think the only ones that uh, singled out uh, Tandi Mudise, saying that uh, she reminds them of Winnie Mandela and that uh, I, I guess for her that's encouraging that uh, opposition parties, especially one that's gained in size, um, are wishing her well. But again, uh, that warning that you are the speaker of the yeah. assembly and not of a party. And it's, it's, and it's so true, you know, uh, the challenge for her, which I think she will really do well because she has been there before, the challenge for her will be to become a speaker for everyone, to become independent, impartial, uh, because she's a, a ANC member, but there she's a speaker for everyone. But it's very encouraging, really, to see the, 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 the atmosphere, the decorum, the dignity, the, the, you know, the amiability that you find there, the congratulations. So you can see that everyone mm. is happy. Of course, yes, this will, uh, it will change when really business comes. Yeah. <laughs> At the moment, it's just a but congratulations. It is, a, it is an interesting start. <laughs> I haven't seen hugs and uh, yes. laughter and yeah. banter between the president and opposition leaders <coughs> in some time now. Yeah, indeed. And, and you know, it's quite <coughs> encouraging because um, they, they, I think for me they're trying to show that there's a difference between the previous administration and this one. Uh, there was a lot of hostility uh, amongst uh, uh, members of parliament 
and which is something that we're not yeah. seeing here. But I think one would uh, also um, uh, look at how President Ramaphosa last year has been trying to relate with uh, uh, leaders of different political parties. He made sure that he give them all the necessary respect that they deserve. And they, he also has a lot of respect from, from uh, different political parties. And the unity, the, the behavior of MPs today uh, sends a message for me to say, we seem to be having a one united parliament that has to work in the interest of all of us. All right. So a drawing of the line, an, a line in the sand saying, past 10 years have come and gone. This is your opportunity to write a new story, not just for your party, but for the country. Yeah, when a leader is comfortable with his own skin, when a leader uh, thinks with his feet, in other words, when a leader is grounded, uh, he will really won't fear any dissenting opinions and views, you know. So you can see the, that there will be time when they will differ with each other. There will be time when they will agree with each other as long as he does his own thing uh, in a principled uh, and values-driven uh, manner. Uh, and then really you can see that it, uh, it's a very good acceptance yeah. uh, uh, and that, from and all that, of them. And that kept coming up time and time again, didn't it? Where um, I think it was Musi Maimani in fact, uh, we're going to pause there and go back to the National Assembly because I believe the speaker is uh, 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 re-starting re the meeting again, the gathering. Amanda. Amanda. Uh, thank you very much. On behalf of the ANC, I would like to congratulate the speaker first, uh, Matt Handy. The deputy speaker, don't do this to me. And, and the president. We are quite heartened by the fact that today we are cooperating. We are hoping that that will be the character of this sixth parliament, that we work together. It doesn't mean that when you are cooperating, you are captured. It just means we are working together with one objective to build a better country and it is the responsibility of all of us. And once we build that better country, we will all accept the fact that a better country is good for the citizens of this country. And that will be our focus. From the ANC side, we will work with all of you. Uh, but I want to appeal to all of you not to drag us into the mud. Because when you drag us into the mud, we'll have to walk out of that mud. And once we walk out of that mud, it will not be as smooth as it is to drag us there. We're quite excited that uh, we got the support uh, for President Cyril Ramaphosa. We must thank South African people who voted us back to govern uh, the country and govern eight of the provinces. It was quite tight in Gauteng. Uh, in electing a premier, uh, but it went through. We're hoping that that support from our people is appreciated and we will be expected to do the right thing. And we're committing ourselves here that the ANC will do the right thing, it will serve its people, will go and walk in the street, not during the elections. As we move out of this parliament, we'll send all our people to go and serve the people of South Africa. That is our commitment. Congratulations, President. Uh, we're quite happy that you are the President of the Republic. We're excited, we'll support you, and we're committing ourselves to work hard and do what is in the best interest of our people. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. The Honorable the President-elect. Honorable Speaker, 
Deputy Speaker, the Chief Justice of our country, as well as the Deputy Chief Justice, Isitwala Andre Ubaba Uendrum Langeni, who is here with us. Members of Parliament, the leaders of faith-based formations who are here with us, distinguished guests, and fellow South Africans. I'd like to start off on a wonderful light note. Today is somebody's birthday. And she requested that, President, once you are confirmed, could you, as your very first presidential act, sing for me a happy birthday song? And that is Ayanda Jojo, who is celebrating her birthday today. Now, I said to her, I would only sing for her. I've perfected my singing, Honorable Malema, particularly in private. I said I would sing for her if she disclosed her age to me. She did not want to disclose her age, so I'm not going to sing. Honorable members and fellow South Africans, I am truly honored and humbled to have been elected to serve the people of our country and indeed our country as President of the Republic of South Africa. This is a deep honor for me and I am humbled by this. It is a responsibility that I intend to discharge with the greatest of care but also to the best of my ability. It is a responsibility that I undertake mindful of the needs, the aspirations, the hopes, and the expectations of the people of South Africa. In this regard, I will seek to act and be the president of all South Africans, and not just the president of those who voted for the party that I lead, and also those who voted for those who voted for parties that are here. So I will be a president for all South Africans and not just a president for the African National Congress and those who voted. It has been two weeks since the people of our country went to the polls to elect the honorable members who are now gathered in this house. The people of our country went to the polls in peace and with a great deal of pride and dignity. And I stand here to applaud the masses of our people who braved terrible weather conditions, who braved all manner of challenges and difficulties to go out and vote and participate in the elections that have brought us all here today. And let us applaud them and thank them. We all know that we had a hotly contested and often discordant election campaign. All political parties present here and those that could not win a seat did their utmost to undo each other, but the people of South Africa have had their say. In some cases, some of the parties did undo the others, but we are all here united as members of parliament to do what our people would like to see done. Our people have spoken, and they have spoken very clearly, and they have also spoken quite emphatically. In this composition, this house is a reflection of the will of the people. Together we are their representatives, but I think we should also regard ourselves as their champions. 
together despite our different party affiliations, we carry a common mandate to build the nation our people yearn for, where all will be free, free from poverty, free from hunger, and also free from unemployment. But where they will also feel that they are secure and equal, and they are able to lead a livelihood that will be able to support their households and their families. Collectively, all of us who are here, we have a mandate to build a nation founded on the principles of social justice, solidarity and equality. But also, we have a mandate to build a nation that is at peace with itself and the world. We've been given this responsibility on an overriding basis to revive our economy, to create jobs, to not only bring hope to the masses of our people, to actualize that hope and make sure that indeed their aspirations are met. But we've also been given the responsibility to revive and rekindle the institutions that we have in our country, institutions that not only support democracy, but institutions that advance the lives of our people. The people of this country expect us to work together. They expect us to collaborate. They also expect us to build consensus and to effect change. They expect us to find solutions, solutions where people might believe that the difficulties are intractable, but they expect us to tackle those difficult issues and find solutions for them. Certainly, they expect a robust exchange of views in this house. They understand that we may not often agree. They also know that we will differ quite a lot on a number of issues but they also would like to see us dealing with each other with honor, with dignity, and respect. That is what our people expect. They also would like us to respect their wishes. The majority of people in our country want us to respect them. As we debate here, they don't want to see a house that, as you said, Honorable Malema, could degenerate into chaos and disorder. They want to see a house, this house, their house, being a house of debate, robust discussions, but not a house of chaos, of disorder, and a house that is underpinned by disrespect for one another. As we enter the sixth democratic administration, please be assured of my personal commitment and the commitment of the incoming executive to fulfill these obligations of seeking consensus, of collaborating, of working together to find solutions to all the challenges that our country faces. Please be assured of our commitment to work with Parliament, with the National Assembly, and yes, indeed, with the National Council of Provinces, where we will work together with all parties represented here to create conditions for meaningful social and economic transformation. I wish to express my gratitude to the Chief Justice for presiding over the establishment of this new parliament. But I also want to thank you, Chief Justice, for doing an unprecedented act of going on your knees and praying, not only for this parliament, but praying for our nation.
Honorable Grunewald could not hear your prayer, but Honorable Grunewald, I heard the Chief Justice's prayer. Like you, I wish it was broadcast so that everyone in the land could hear what prayer the Chief Justice was offering. And it is wonderful to have a Chief Justice who is not only a person deeply steeped in jurisprudence, but also a person deeply steeped in matters of the faith. Thank you very much, Chief Justice. <laughs> Honorable Maimani, thank you for your kind words. Your words about collaboration is what is going to underpin my work as president. My mandate is to build a social compact amongst all South Africans. I will be proceeding to do precisely that and also extend and deepen the consultation, the working together with you and various other leaders of other parties who are represented here. We will be doing so to ensure that we improve the lives of all South Africans. So collaboration, Mr. Maimani, or Honorable Maimani, is my second name. I will be collaborating with you quite extensively. So join me as I extend my hand of collaboration. <laughs> Honorable Malema, thank you for your kind words of congratulations. I want to assure you that my interest in serving our people will not be derived for serving special interest groups and whoever they may be. You've named them, but whoever they may be, I will be, my, my mandate is derived from the masses of our people. Like you, I have to speak to all South Africans and to advance the interests of our people. I will be able to work, yes, with whoever, be they in business, be they in community-based organizations. I will, like Madiba did, I will be able to work with kings, to work with them, and queens, and captains of industry, and all and sundry, without losing the common touch of the masses of our people. That I will not do. So my focus, Honorable Maimani, Malema rather, is going to be on advancing the interests of our people. When I was a trade unionist, I was able, yes, to talk to the bosses, to talk to managers of various companies. And as I did that, my sole interest was to advance the interests of mine workers. And in this case, it will be to advance the interests of the masses of our people who still suffer under the burden of unemployment, the burden of inequality, and the burden of poverty. That is going to be the driving lodestar that will lead me to do all those things in the interest of our people. I can assure you on that. No special interest, only the interest of our people as a whole. Be assured. A number of leaders have spoken and congratulated me, and I thank you for all that. Honorable Grunewald, yes, our people want hope, but they also want much more than hope. We need to get down to work to ensure that our people indeed can see that we are addressing their needs, their aspirations. They can see that indeed this is a government that is going to work for them. And I want to say I'm prepared to work with the Freedom Front Plus in making sure that we build South Africa. And thank you for articulating your wish to work with us to build this South Africa that we can make the South Africa of our dreams. We want to live into the future, but we must also remember that the past 
should not define what should happen in the future. We must address that past in order for us to plot a way to the future. So that is what we're going to do. <laughs> Reverend Bishwe, yes, you want tough leadership. Yes, there will be toughness because the problems that we confront are huge. They are immense. We are, yes, going to have to be tough and to make tough choices as well. We are going to have to ensure that as we address the needs of our people, we take difficult decisions. And some of those difficult decisions may be tough decisions against certain people, certain interest groups. Honorable Mishwe, Reverend Mishwe, I am a fisherman. Yes, I know you talk about fish, a living fish that can turn upstream. As I go out to catch fish, that's precisely what I always observe. We will be able to be good fishermen so that we can fully address the interests of our people. Yes, also by turning upstream. General Holomisa, you say that Madiba will be smiling wherever he is. But I see Madiba smiling for all of us. He's not singling out a single individual. He's smiling for all of us as he sees this parliament, this parliament that he worked so hard to help put together, is now a parliament, the sixth one, that will please him immensely. So Madiba, wherever you are, I know that your smile is for all of us. O Artambo, wherever you are, I know that as you look at us, you are smiling with deep pleasure. And Walter Sisulu, Mamo Albertina, Winima Tigizela Mandela, all of them looked at us and say, we are on the right path. And all I think they would all say is, keep on the right path. Continue to, continue to do the right things and work in a way that does not defile the image of this South Africa that they worked so hard to build. Honorable Hendricks, thank you very much for your congratulatory message. Yes, it is our intention that we should all work together to achieve the great ideals that our people have. My dearest sister, Patricia DeLille, Honorable DeLille, I'm glad to hear that good will not only support, but it will also offer love. I'm so much in need of love. Thank you very much. And yes, yes, we will make sure that indeed government does become accountable. We will work hard. You have been a great advocate for accountability, and we will make sure that indeed we do have a government that is accountable to the people of our country, but also accountable for what it does. That we will ensure. Honorable Sibisi, speaking on behalf of Umamu Makwazam Sibi, leader of the NFP, yes, you want to see change. Change is what you are going to see. This sixth administration is going to be about change. Our people yearn for change, and change is what we are going to offer them. And thank you very much for your kind message. The Party of Land and Revolution, the Pan-Africanist Congress, thank you very much for your very kind message of congratulations. The land question is what is on the table in this parliament. It did not die with the fifth uh, uh, parliament. It is now here on this table and we are going to solve the land question. <laughs> Honorable Zungu, you say, and correctly so, that our people want more than hope. And I am able to join you in saying we need to go beyond hope. We must build hope because hope should, 
spring eternal in the hearts of our people. But our people cannot eat hope. Our people might want more than hope, and we are going to work extremely hard to give them just more than hope. Dadele Kota Kalebo, you say that the fate of our people is in my hands. I look at it differently. The fate of our people is in our collective hands here in this parliament. All of us must see ourselves as holding the hopes, the aspirations of our people, yes, and the fate of our people in our hands. What we do here is what should improve the lives of our people. You say you've never been president before, my recollection is that you are president of COPE. So, President, Oarata Kapaurati, O President. So, Kikopahe Munghadiwaka, Seu Seun Saudi Bona, Uli President, you are COPE, Hai Badinte, Uli Fiti Saudi Kisemona Hunna, Horelin Naki Konoi Tuta Seu, Saudi Sang Hantle Mani, who COPE. So you and I are presidents, I'm president of the African National Congress. You are president of COPE. Maybe where we differ is that you have never been president of a country I am. Kimori Fapanante. Keta Uruta Tedihing, Luana Utan Tuta Tedihing here. Kialebuha Ndadele Kota. Babu Kalo, Honorable Galo, thank you very much for your very kind message as well. We will continue to fight for the interests and the rights of our people. You say that the fighting spirits should be positive, and I join you in that. We want positive spirits, and I just wish that those positive spirits should continue to prevail here. So I thank all of the leaders political parties, for the manner in which you have expressed your congratulatory messages. Now we go great. Honorable Mantashe, thank you very much for your congratulatory message. For a minute, you came to me and said, what should you say? But you found your words, and thank you very much for those wonderful words. Now, lastly, Allow me then, allow me to thank you for all those wonderful message uh, of support and congratulations. In the... Oh, honorable Buteles. Oh, you are the, Sheng, you are the sage of this parliament. There is no one else who competes with you when it comes to age. There's no one in this parliament who competes with you in as far as experience as well as wisdom. You are a reservoir of wisdom. <laughs> Honorable Butelezi, gave me his written message. And it was for that reason that I just skipped for a moment. It's a beautifully written message that I will cherish. I will cherish because this is a message that is meant from the heart. And I thank you for the wisdom that is embedded in this message. With all these wonderful words that you have expressed. I just wish that your wisdom can continue to be spread amongst all of us who are here. And as the House in the Fifth Parliament got into disorder, you were the one sane and most experienced voice that sought to keep us together. I just wish that that continues even in this Sixth Parliament. Thank you very much for your very kind words. Lastly, allow me then to thank all of you 
as members of parliament in advance for all the work that we are all going to do. And it is a word of congratulations to all of us because by being here, we've been singled out by the masses of our people to come and work for them. So it's a word of congratulations, but at the same time, it's a call to arms. It's a call to hard work. What lies ahead for all of us as we will get in engaged and involved in the robust debates and the work that we're going to do, let us for all time remember that our people have stored a great deal of confidence and their hope in us. Lastly, um, allow me to congratulate the speaker and the deputy speaker on their election. Today we sit here in a house that has been made by our people because our people have spoken. They have given us their clear mandate. It is now time for us to go to work, to go and work for our people. As for me, I commit myself to work day and night, very hard at the same time to work for the interests of our people. I am therefore humbled with this honor that has been bestowed on me to be president of the people of South Africa as president of the Republic of South Africa. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Honorable members, I know it's been a very long day. Permit me to make an announcement. We wish to announce that upon leaving this house, honorable members are requested to go straight to the steps of the National Assembly for a group photo of all of us. That group photo will be preceded by a photograph that will be of the Chief Whip, the President, and the presiding officers. Honorable members, this concludes the proceedings of the day. Members and guests are requested to remain at their places until the procession has left the chamber. The procession will leave this house in the following order. The session at arms, the speaker, the deputy speaker, the president-elect, chief justice, and the acting secretary to parliament. The house is adjourned. My apologies, my apologies, chief justice for the photo. Thank you very much. And there you have it. That wraps the entire process for the day. Eight hours later, MPs, 400 MPs of the National Assembly have been sworn in. We have a newly elected Speaker of the National Assembly as well as a Deputy Speaker. And of course, we have a newly elected President of the Republic of South Africa. And one thing that President Cyril Ramaphosa really tried to drive home during his, his speech here this evening was that he, he reiterated that he is not just a President for the people who voted for him, but he's also a President for every single person of this country. And he was trying to drive home the point of social cohesion and also just trying to tell all the other political parties, the other four, 13 parties represented in Parliament, that he actually wants to join hands with them for the sake of the people of this country. But here to give us more analysis um, about what happened today, I've, I have Mr. Nyembezi of UCT, um, an analyst who's going to speak to us about his thoughts. You've obviously been watching everything as well, sir. Uh, what are your initial thoughts of how today panned out? 
well it must be a relief to get it over and done with uh, because uh, the swearing in went well but we saw that there is just under a dozen of members of parliament who were not sworn in and of course that process of contesting the position of the speaker necessitated the voting in secret and uh, it took a long time to get the outcome of that but the MPs have spoken everybody is happy what do you think about the responses and the reactions that the president received from the various political parties? Um, do you think that there is going to be room for cohesion and more hand-holding between the various parties this time round than what we saw in the fifth parliament? Yes, this promises to be a vibrant uh, parliament, particularly because some parties uh, came back with increased seats like the EFF and the Freedom Front Plus and they seem to be the parties that are going to raise issues very sharply and of course the welcoming of new entrants like Good and Al Jama, so it's going to be new faces like the ATM uh, and of course the, it looks like the cordiality is being built to then say let us all work together but of course the taste is in the pudding. What do you think of about the injection of, of fresh blood? And by fresh blood, I mean the younger MPs. Lots of the parties are boasting about the, the very young age of many of the new MPs. Do you think this is good? Do you think people need more life experience to be a, a public representative here in Parliament? Or do you think it's good that we have these younger MPs here now? Well, it's a welcome move, 25 years in our democracy, to have fresh blood coming in. And I had the privilege of teaching four of the MPs who are in Parliament here and two who are in the provincial legislatures. I think it means that political parties that are seeking a, a vote from the new generation, the first-time voters, have got a good future prospect. And of course, we still have to see how they perform uh, these uh, young minds because they speak their mind. And I I just hope that the program of parliament in terms of passing legislation holding the executive accountable and being the voice of the people is going to be more representative more manifest because of the new blood that we see in here let's go back to the news of the day deputy president didi mabuza who withdrew um who who asked that sorry who asked that he's swearing in be postponed um the anc has reiterated over and over today that come sunday president ramaphosa will still be announcing his uh, deputy how do you read the statement that was released by the presidency regarding uh, deputy president didi mabuza Reading from the statement about the postponement of the swearing-in of Deputy President Mabuza, it looks like a 50-50 situation because uh, the reasons that are being provided is that uh, it's because the Integrity Commission of the ANC has alleged that he brought the party into disrepute and that uh, there's something that he needs to answer to and he has asked himself for an audience with that Integrity Commission. Uh, but from, from the look of things, these are uh, procedural issues that need to be uh, ventilated um, uh, quite using substantial time so I kind of have my doubts that uh, by the time the president is inaugurated or soon thereafter as in like in the two weeks time we might have a deputy president but it does mean that his seat is secure here nobody has been sworn in to replace him so it means that perhaps when all is done and over with even if it takes a month or more he might still come back as the deputy president Mr. Nkosikulu Nyembezi, thank you so much for your time and speaking with us today. Um, right now, behind me, all the MPs, uh, the President, the Speaker, the Deputy Speaker, they're all streaming out of the National Assembly. I'm sure you can see it in the background. They're all streaming out of the National Assembly. There's going to be an official photo shoot. The media are all clamoring to get the, the beauty shot, the perfect shot for tomorrow's front pages, of course. So we see a sea of red, of course. We have the red berets. Um, and then we see all the other MPs taking their position um, as Parliament's official photographer. I see the ACDP's Reverend Meshwe. Looks like he's looking for his seat in the front. I'm assuming that the party leaders will be sitting in the front alongside President Cyril Ramaphosa. And as that happens in the background, what I am going to say to you now is from myself, Abra Babia, my colleague Bulalani Philip, and the rest of the crew here at Parliament today. Thank you so much for spending your time with us, and we'll catch up with you soon.
And our thanks to our team in Cape Town. Thanks very much indeed for the coverage. And uh, we want to say thank you very much indeed also to my guests that have been helping us uh, unpack all of this. Mazwe Majola, thank you very much indeed. Leadership expert, political expert, Levin Do. Thank you so much indeed, sir. I wish we could have talked more, but I'm sure there'll be a lot to talk about in the coming days as the cabinet announcement looms, but not before the inauguration and an important speech one suspects will need to happen. Well, that's it from the SA Today team. You've been watching this special broadcast out of Parliament. The full view is coming up shortly with full reactions on uh, what's uh, played out today in Parliament. We have a new president, speaker, deputy speaker. And they helped you, sir. How much? Yeah, he's, he's going to call you as soon as he's done, brother.